Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme, and I'm the main software architect of the EG Lab software for processing EG data. This is part six of EG pre-processing about removing bad channels. So we were just examining the raw data, and now it's time to identify and reject bad channels. So to reject bad channels, first, we need to remove the channels which are not supposed to be in the data. So this would be with the menu Edit, Select Data. And uh, this interface pops up in the last edit box. Here you would enter the channel you want to uh, ignore. And most amplifier, uh, sometimes you don't have channel hooked up. They, they might record additional channels which you would want to just ignore because they're flat, they don't have any data and they're just distracting you. So uh, here, for instance, uh, uh, this channel EXG5 to EXG8 in this specific data sets don't have any data. So we'll just select them, press OK, and um, now they would be listed in the edit box and we would check the box to uh, remove these. And now they're removed and now we can uh, we can uh, visualize the data and try to see which channel we want to remove. What I personally like to use myself is the channel spectra and map because I can see at once with the channel spectrum, uh, each channel uh, spectrum, if the channel is bad or not. So when, the, when you press this menu, this interface pops up. Uh, by default here you have 15%. You can, uh, this is because sometimes this function takes time. So uh, that's why by default it's not 100%. You might want to put 100%, especially if you don't have too much data. And you might want to increase the frequency range as well. You would press OK. And this is the interface that would pop up. And here we can see we have a lot of uh, channels. So we have some real data here. We can see some alpha, alpha power, but we have a lot of artifact channel. And what you can do is when you look at this interface, you can actually click on every single trace here. And then on the MATLAB command line, it's going to tell you this is channel 24, 15, 32, and 30. And then you can put them in the previous interface and say, I want to reject these channels and replot this trace to see, uh, to check that they've disappeared. Another menu you can use to uh, reject channels is this one, channel properties. So for instance, we would plot the properties for channel three and 31 here. And that's what we would get. Channel three is located here. So we have an all red dot and uh, channel 31 is located here. You can see channel 31, the range. So the, the range goes from minus 38 to plus 38 microvolts. But for channel three, it goes up to uh, minus 4,000 to 4,000. So you can see that using the range, this channel seems widely out of range. Also, the spectrum is 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 no uh, this the spectrum is very smooth. This visualization, by the way, is just a visualization in which we stack the data for this channel so we can see the whole activity throughout the session. So here, for instance, I might want to tag channel three. As a, as a bad channel based on bad information. Although again, it could just be that specific uh, set of trials right here or set of segments right here. And if I remove these segments, then the rest of the channel uh, will be okay. Once you've decided, when you've selected the channels you want to remove, you go back to this menu, select data, and now you're going to enter the name of the channels here. You can also enter the channel number. For instance, if in the this plot spectrum interface, he was telling you number 10. And then you would not forget to check this box, remove these. If you don't check this box, it's only going to keep, for instance, channel F6. You press OK. And then, as usual, it pops up this interface. What do you want to do with the new data set? You can override the parents or uh, save it. There is also methods for automatic channel rejection. I'm just going to mention two here. There's the automatic channel rejection here uh, in EGLab. 
and this method allows you to see which electrode do you want to remove and then you can use two measures one is priority and one is kurtosis and um, basically when you use probability it's going to find the channel which have improbable activity compared to the other channels when you choose kurtosis it's going to compute the kurtosis of each channels and then which find the outliers and um, it uses the standard deviation as outlier and then it will tag which channels are bad or not another method um, it's called clean raw data, so that's one of the extension of each lab. So if you want to install extension, you go in the menu File, Manage Extension, and that would be a data processing extension. And this plugin also allows you to detect uh, bad channels using other metric. And there are other plugins that also allow you to uh, reject uh, bad channels. So when you select one of these methods, for instance, it might show you, okay, this is the bad channels I've detected. Do you want to reject it or not? And then you press the reject button and now this channel gets removed. In EGLAD, uh, remove channels are not only labeled for rejection, they're actually removed from the data. This is why we ask uh, users to actually save their data at different steps because the channels are actually removed from the data. We, there is a trace, so it knows that this channel was present in the data, it still retains the name, but the data itself is gone. So if you want to get back to the data, you have to uh, load the data set that was saved before removing this channel. And the reason this is done this way is that there is a, a common line interface for processing data, batch processing, and this makes it much simpler. Uh, for the users because the data that's on the command line is only the data, the clean data from which you remove artifact, from which you remove uh, segments. There is also the op options instead of removing channels of interpolating uh, channels. So you can say interpolate electrodes and then select from data channels. You can select, for instance, I want to interpolate, I don't want to remove F6, I just want to uh, interpolate it. And that's definitely an option for technical reasons we will see in one of the future videos when you want to run independent component analysis it is better not to remove data channels it's not to interpolate data channels it's just better to remove them and then they can be interpolated later on when you do group analysis there is automated methods that just search and find the channels which need to be interpolated automatically so that's we usually don't interpolate channels because we're going to run ICA and the interpolated channel can interfere with uh, ICA. Where I'm going to explain that in a future uh, video. But that's certainly an option if you uh, want to do it. I'm going to do a live uh, demo now. So again, starting EG Lab. And I'm going to read Again, that data set that's in the sample data folder of EG Lab. So load existing data set. Sample data, EG Lab data dot set. And this time I will also look up the channels because it's useful to have the channel labels. So I present that in another video. So that's basically edit channel location, cancel, and then reading the channel location file using this button sample data that's the file that corresponds to uh, this data set so I'm just going to open it okay auto detect and now I have the channel uh, locations so first I'll plot the spectrum and you can put here 100% of the data up to uh, half the sampling uh, frequency, which is the Nyquist uh, frequency. And we can see here uh, on the spectrum that there is there's not that many outliers. So if I click on the curve here, I can see 15, 24. These are two channels which are below the other ones and here we have six and two 
So let's see what these channels are. So to see which channel they are, for instance, I can go uh, select data. And here I see two is EOG. So these are the EOG channel. Two and six are the EOG channel. And 1524, they're T8 and F8. So they're temporal channels. So they usually have more high frequency noise than others. So in, that, in, in this case, I would not reject these channels. I might reject the EOG channels, for instance, if they don't have the same reference as the rest of the channels, but in this case they do. So I don't need to reject them. Also, I would only reject channels which spectrum is widely different from other channels. Here it's not so much uh, of a departure. But let's just uh, look, uh, uh, still look at the automated, automatic channel rejection menu. So if we try the kurtosis, we just leave everything default. It's going to tell us, okay, these three channels are uh, outliers. Here it gives us, okay, the kurtosis is 60 here for FPZ, 22 for uh, EOG. So it lab labels them as bad because they're more than five standard deviation compared to the other channel. Again, here we wouldn't remove these channels. Uh, we can look at the other measures like the probability so that's all unlikely is the activity from one channel and again it selects the first two ones and then you can see the measure of uh, uh, probability here is our normalized measure and uh, I also wanted to show uh, for example the spectrum measure so so here we saw in, in the spectrum analysis, we saw these two channels, they seem to have a little bit higher spectrum. So for instance, if I was to set a measure here, and I tried before to so I could find the right threshold, but more than 2.5 standard deviation in the 40 to 50 frequency range using the spectrum, then it would detect um, the two EOG channels. So these two channels right there. You see these are marked as, as bad because I set a threshold at 2.5. So these are very simple automated artifact rejection measures, very more advanced one like the, the one I mentioned in the representation, ASR, that you can try. And they're still more in the uh, extension manager data processing, processing extension. ASR is actually not installed by default, so you have to install it with the data processing extension. That's it for this presentation. In the next uh, uh, video, we'll talk about removing bad data segments.